All right, everybody, say hello to the new kid on the block. This is the 2021 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Shanus. One really quick message and one quick disclaimer before I get into the nitty gritty of the video. First thing is I'd like to greatly apologize to the viewer who watched the previous video and ended up going to the same dealership where I test drove this particular vehicle uh, because of course it sold out very quickly. Um, most dealerships that I've seen have only received one of these particular models and they're kind of in great demand. Quite literally the day after I made the video, somebody went to go test drive the car and then subsequently it sold almost like a few days later. So I apologize greatly to that viewer, uh, but thank you so much for obviously taking interest in the vehicle. Uh, number two, so as I mentioned in the previous video, it was drizzling, uh, it started kind of raining a bit the day that I test drove and kind of did a slight hands-on video for this particular car. So with that being said, to reiterate, I mentioned it's a hands-on video, it's not a full review. It's more of a how I feel about the car from a tuner's perspective, somebody that wants a sporty, affordable car and is looking to more than likely modify the vehicle. So I'll give you guys my driving impressions afterward. I could not actually, well, I technically didn't have the time to be able to mount a camera inside and have you guys come along for the drive along. Uh, COVID and a bunch of other things and like I said, they did have already appointments to uh, potential buyers of the vehicle. So with that out of the way, I'm going to show you guys real quick some of the footage I was able to get about the interior and the outside and just a few comments and then we're going to come back real quick so I can give you guys my view on how I felt with the driving aspect and the future potential of modifying this particular video. So let's get into it. Look at this beautiful thing. I personally like it. It does, of course, take styling cues from the Sonata, so it is a kind of baby car, but it's striking. And I was just obviously low to the ground. The one thing that I'll tell you guys right away, this is stock. It's meant to be sportier, but it is much lower to the ground right from the get-go. I honestly feel like this car is lowered, and it's not. So take that for what you will. I'm not going to go, like I said, full into specs, but I'll show you what I mean. So this is the driver's side door. And as you can see, there's not much gap at all. Like this is one of those seats where you're literally going to get in and you're going to fall a little bit into the seat because of the fact that the stock ride height is quite low as it is. So if you're not into low cars, which would be weird because you're watching my video and you're on my channel right now then this car clearly is not the one for you the front looks great looks aggressive but let's go to the back where i do believe this car just definitely looks the most unique again it's just striking and again being the n-line because it's supposed to be the sportier model you have a little lip spoiler this does have real exhaust, not fake. So when you go down here, it's literally just single exit, dual exhaust on the passenger side, nothing there. And as you can see, I actually like how there's no cutout on that side, only here. Um, I'm saying that because there's some vehicles that have cutouts on both sides, but exhaust only coming out one. It looks really weird. Has a little kind of like a diffuser going on and a little triangle. Don't know if you can see it right underneath the Bob Baker uh, license plate but um, it looks like something's missing. And I noticed that from the start. That's actually something that's being saved for the actual end model where there will be a full on uh, red reflector there, so. Also, if you guys have never really like, you're like, hey, it looks different, but I can't really tell it apart. So these, the end line have this little black strip right here where the normal one, um, the strip on this part is uh, clear, I believe. So again, just adding to the aggressiveness Kind of like if you did some aftermarket wrapping yourself. I think the only missed opportunity, especially on this white one, is a blacked out roof. I think the blacked out roof would have made the look just go that much better. Especially because you do have black side mirrors. And the wheels are actually pretty nice. I mean, I test drove this, so I have a pretty good opinion of it, which I'll go deeper into in a moment. Um, I'm going to show you a little few things about the interior. But... Uh, one of the biggest gripes about the R-Spec, the Veloster, was the tire selection. These are also hand cooks, but these actually felt much, much better. So 
Um, again, it's just refinement all around. And the last thing that I thought was pretty neat is if, for those of you guys that had kind of ultimate versions of the Veloster, uh, you'll notice that there's kind of a little indentation right here. So on the Velocers or some of the other models, there was a physical black button there that you would have to touch to lock and unlock doors. Love how this one is just subtle. It's there, but you can't see it. It's not an obvious button. So again, just makes the car that much more, a little bit refined. And then lastly, one of the changes that we saw with the second generation Veloster is loving the fact that Hyundai is doing front mount intercoolers you're gonna say, hey, the first gen had it. Yes, but the first gen had it vertically on the side, whereas this, it's clearly right down there and it's horizontal, like a traditional um, intercooler should be. So that summarizes my quick rundown of the car. I'm generally, honestly, like really in love with the looks of this. Um, I think the white is very striking. If you're undecisive or undecided on a color or white's your jam, um, I think you can't go wrong with getting a white one. Um, oh yeah, I guess the only weird thing is, uh, you'll notice that there, there was an N-line badge on the front. There's an N-line badge on the fenders, but I know for those of you guys that want to brag about it, there's legit <laughs> no N-line badge on the back, which is a little weird. I mean, there's clearly cues that tell you it's an N-line or the sportier model, but I don't know. For those of you guys, that that's a big deal. That's not there. So yeah, but let's jump to the interior so I can just kind of give you a few things, a few opinions. Just don't forget, I'm a big boy. I actually fit decently comfortable in this car. I love it. So let's go. So real quick, guys, this is the interior. I have a mask on, so forgive me if my voice is muffled. I'm not going to do a full like review or anything like that, but I just kind of want to give you guys a perspective from the driver's seat. So I'm literally like sitting down right now and I might have to actually scoot back just so you guys can kind of get a better, there we go. So this is a gauge cluster. It's actually really pretty. Like if you guys have seen video reviews on this, these gauge clusters look huge and very gaudy. And honestly me sitting behind it, it's actually quite small to the point where it's nice. Um, I really was kind of afraid that and again, this might not be anything to you guys, but because of the reviews and the pictures, they look so huge, but they're actually not that big. Like they just, they look just right, especially if you're sitting like right behind it. Again, this is me with the camera right up against the steering wheel. Realistically, when you're sitting, well, let's see, you'd be sitting like that. So it's not too bad. Um, obviously it has uh, this particular model, has the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And as you can see, there's that. So here's the uh, independent uh, AC control for both driver and passenger side. Heated seats on this particular model in case that's something you care about. And then this particular model, like everything else, unfortunately everyone's getting the dual clutch models first. So as you can see, here's a dual clutch. Not too bad though, it's in park. I'm actually gonna hold the brake real quick so I could put it into drive. Okay, feels good. This is now in sh sport mode, as you can see. It's telling me, shift into P. Putting it back into P, putting it in park. And then I'm actually gonna put it in reverse just so you guys can see the rear view camera. Trajectory, yes. Again, I'm coming from a Velocia that has no trajectory, so that's what I'm showing you guys. This shifter actually feels really good and like it just it feels good like if you're going to be shifting yourself again it's a dual clutch model but it feels really nice and smooth uh, I love the red stitching of course red stitching accents on the interior you have the N logo on the seat and even more red stitching um, I mean I might not be picky again for the price I think it's pretty nice um, it obviously looks a little more refined than the Veloster did so there's that. Also, for those of you guys that want to do some very, very spirited driving, you do have a manual handbrake, no electronic. So, you know, that's kind of nice. Steering wheel, looks really good. It's kind of like a uh, black chrome, uh, but it looks really nice, very subtle. Um, yeah, I, I love this, let's see, this little screen. Let's see what it's got on there. So you have your driving assists, 
you have the menu to just adjust everything. Fuel economy, so let's just go down. Trip information, drive information, digital speedometer, that's kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna see if like, if the drive mode changes anything as far as like the color illuminating of this. So, so okay, so it's red there for that mode. And okay, so this, nothing changes. It's just letting you know you're in sport mode. So that's kind of cool, just a little indicator. So yeah, just kind of little small tidbits, but I really like the car on the inside. All right guys, and we're back, and hopefully you at least got a taste for what the outside looks like, you know, a little aside from pictures, and also some details that I was able to capture once more, coming from the potential perspective of an enthusiast slash someone who might eventually modify the platform. Hopefully you were able to kind of see some of the like I said, I wasn't going very deep into like the interior aspects, but things that just caught my eye, especially comparing it to uh, more bare bones models like base model vehicles or even the uh, coveted R specs that came before this. So with that being said, I did get to test drive the car. And the first thing that stood out to me is just how far and refined, specifically the Gamma engine platform and the following transmission have come along. Uh, for those of you that don't know, like I said, I obviously come from the first gen Veloster and I've test driven multiple iterations of it from base models to modified vehicles and some of your guys' cars. Um, and that transmission, I won't lie to you, specifically the first iteration of the Hyundai dual clutch transmissions, I was not a major fan of. Uh, and to note, there was actually problems with some of the first generation dual clutch transmissions for example, the first ones that came out in the Sonata, even before the Veloster platform, you know, there was recalls and there was just warranty issues and whatnot. Um, I'd like to state that Hyundai has come a very long way from those original models. Even, for example, I did get to test drive um, kind of a first view of the second generation Veloster dual clutch when it first came out. Again, the first one that dealerships were getting was the ultimate version and Missy Kitty was kind enough to kind of give me the inside scoop of being able to uh, drive that vehicle. And you know, that one was a little more impressive than the first generation Veloster, but this one, the dual clutch in this one, even though I'm pretty sure is very much the same, just feels more refined. It feels crisper. It feels, it feels like the response of it is a lot better. So I might attribute some of that to probably ECU tuning and mapping, but at the same time, I'm gonna guess that the internal mechanisms, the actual shifting mechanism, has some part to play in. Again, Hyundai has probably had at least five to six years to refine this particular transmission, and it was actually very nice. Now, as of the time of making of this video, I actually got to test drive the new Sonata N-Line, and I got to test out the eight-speed wet dual-clutch transmission that is now in the new Veloster N dual-clutch and the future Elantra N that's to come out. And there's a big difference between both of those, so I just kind of want to get that out of the way. Of course, that one is on a whole other level. I was ridiculously just amazed. And I'm hoping I could get a full review video, uh, well not review, but like a hands-on video of the Sonata N-Line for you guys because that vehicle just completely blew my mind. It was nothing like I was expecting. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but this dual clutch transmission, the 7 speed, is amazing. You will not be disappointed with what you're getting. Now of course if you're willing to wait, there's the 6 speed manual, which from what I've heard has been refined in and of itself just based off of the fact that the tuning in these cars has gotten a lot better since the first generation. So for those of you guys with second gen Velocers that have a six speed manual transmission, you'll probably know if you ever test drove the first generation that a lot of those things that I disliked or harped on about have been ironed out. And of course I'm expecting the same for the Elantra N-Line six speed. So if you rather have, you know, a manual transmission, just give it a little more time because that'll roll out. Now stepping away from the transmission talk because I think that was kind of one of the major things specifically since you saw that I drove the seven speed. I'm gonna talk about some of the interior aspects as basically a driver experience. So what it feels like to be behind the wheel and just drive this particular vehicle and then we'll get to the actual handling and suspension bits. So with that being said, this car's interior does feel a little cheap. It feels a little plasticky. Again, that might not be a deal breaker for many of you. 
One thing I did notice compared to all the online video reviews and even pictures that I mentioned in the video is that the gauge cluster actually feels adequate. It doesn't feel as big as I've seen in pictures or other review videos. It actually felt right sized, a little smaller than the actual, like I said, footage and pictures, but it felt right. It felt really good. The steering wheel is amazing. I don't know if I'm going crazy because I don't have specs, but the steering wheel does feel smaller than that of the first generation Veloster, but it feels at home. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel, just like the original Veloster turbos, but it just feels better. And like I said, I think it is a little smaller, but the quality is just there. You see the little handcrafted stitching and whatnot. The dual clutch paddles are an immense improvement over the first generation DCT models. They're also nicer. I don't think they're metal because they didn't have that extra weight, but they definitely look it and they feel solid. As far as the actual shifter, the shifter from my point of view is leagues above the first generation Veloster. It is a little shorter. It's not that huge stick, you know, like shaft or whatnot. Um, and it's kind of like a cockpit. So you have it to your side and you know, you can easily move it to the side and shift, you know, front to back or just tap a paddle and it'll immediately go into manual shifting despite it being in drive. Um, one thing that for some people they might not love is that, like I mentioned, it is kind of a cockpit view. So there is that little, I'll show kind of my video footage, but there's that little divider section that's just kind of odd for some people. And it definitely feels disconnecting if you have a passenger. So for those of you that have a significant other that they like to go on road trips with them or whatnot, or just drives, um, there's that. And I think that's part of the reason that it adds to the plasticky feel because it just, it looks a little cheap. Again, this is just me being nitpicky, but this is me just telling you guys, for those of you that might care, because again, unlike the R-Spec, this isn't bare bones. This is meant to be a slightly creature comfort vehicle. The seats are powered seats. There's a stock wireless charger included. There's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay coming with it, um, along with heated seats. So again, it's not necessarily a bare bones model. There are some creature comforts uh, included. So that's just one thing that I wanted to pick. The only thing that I feel that's kind of like a uh, added bonus that I personally think is probably the best like luxury feature from my point of view is just the individual AC controls for driver and passenger, um, especially because typically guys and girls, we run at different temperatures. So your boy over here gets hot very easily and likes to get his AC running while the missus likes to have heated seats and have that warmth of uh, like a heater at times, you know, especially during cold weather. So there's that. But now to the driving. So again, this model, as opposed to the normal Elantras. So for example, if you're in the market and you've decided to test drive a base Elantra or even an Elantra Ultimate, you should know that the biggest difference is that this Elantra, unlike those models, comes with independent rear suspension which is a huge major thing for people that actually appreciate driving experience, but not just that, it just kind of makes you feel more in control of the vehicle. Um, and it's a major thing if you're gonna do any kind of track day events, or even if you're one of those people that likes to go up a mountain every now and then, and then just do kind of an enthusiastic Sunday drive, it's a huge deal. This car feels very well planted. I know I mentioned that the car feels lower and it is in a sense as opposed to non-sporty Elantras, but the center of gravity being lower, you know, the nicer stickier tires and larger wheels. And again, independent rear suspension, the car feels very firm and planted. I was able to do some spirited driving, even the drive modes as tacky, I guess, as that individual drive select mode. And also let me note, it's kind of uncomfortably located. Kind of would have been nicer if it was somewhere near the shifter area. But the drive modes going from just your casual, normal, uh, I believe it's just comfort into sport, definitely stiffens up. Well, I'm sorry, it doesn't stiffen up the suspension, but it tightens up the steering response and it definitely tightens up the shift response. So it lets you kind of go into revs a little higher and then obviously, you know, it'll do the automatic shift or whatnot. And that's one of the biggest annoyances of this particular vehicle is that you can technically, actually, no, no, you just can't. You cannot bounce off of a rev limiter and stay in a gear as long as you'd like. It literally, regardless of you being in manual shifting, the car will shift automatically for you. You technically can't really even redline it. I believe that the redline is in the 6,000 RPM range, maybe like 6,200 or whatnot. And the moment you get to 6,000, it'll just automatically shift for you. You can't hold it. So 
if you were planning on using this for a track day because sometimes staying in a gear for that little bit longer while i don't recommend anybody bouncing off a rev limiter for any length of time um for people to track the car you know there are some times where that might be something that you need and having the car shift out of a power band uh just because it's set up to operate like that can be kind of annoying and a definite drawback so that's kind of my biggest complaints about the car or the two biggest complaints i guess i should say are the interior feeling a little plasticky again because this is a 25 to 26 thousand dollar car now as opposed to what the r spec was back in its day at like starting msrp 21,000. and then number two the fact that even on the dual clutch model even though it's again it's a dual clutch it'll automatically shift it does not let you stick in a gear as long as you'd like uh when you're in a manual mode so that's kind of it i mean if i'm missing anything guys please let me know i didn't want to be super nitpicky about those particular things um the last thing the bonus round is just the availability of modifications and whatnot or just being able to work with this platform as a you know as a customizable thing so as of the making of this video at least on the west coast so california we've had the end lines on the market uh for the elantra at least for about i'd say two to three weeks florida and the east coast got them uh probably about a month a month and a week ago so they've had it a little longer as far as modifications well of course it's a brand new platform and this is technically a whole brand new generation for this body style elantra so there's none i'm just plain and simple i mean i've looked um you might now find a one-off but there's technically not much support so with that being said that might be good news that might be bad news for those of you guys that want the latest and greatest and if clearly this car is a popular vehicle already you're not going to have much to work with from the start besides wheels and tire options of course you could do other cosmetics like wrapping and you know things like that but as far as actual just individual parts being out there they're not quite out there not yet anyways and again that's going to change very quick because within the coming months the end model will come out and for those of you that are into it you'll be able to take some of the end performance uh parts or even just some of the stock end parts and i'm assuming interchange things of that nature but of course parts will start being developed this engine has been around for quite some time so i imagine some of the parts that work for the second gen veloster maybe even the first gen veloster will work and adapt quickly to this car. Um, I didn't obviously get to kind of tinker around with the engine itself and look to see if things are you know, identical to another platform, apologize. But things will be coming around a lot sooner than you think. But for those of you that you know rather wait till any kinks get ironed out or whatnot, that's fine. That just means that if you decide to jump onto this vehicle next year or the year after, there should be plenty of support Again, if you decide to buy this because you want to have the latest and greatest now, you're not you're not miss, you're not making a bad choice. Uh, you're definitely gonna enjoy the vehicle as it is. It's an amazing platform. Um, I think Hyundai's doing all the right things as far as introducing a new mid-range, affordable, sporty option. And like I said, the car looks amazing. Some of the little kind of luxury things does make it look like a higher-end vehicle, uh, despite some of the cheaper aspects. So that's my wrap up. That's kind of my summary of the vehicle itself on my first drive. I, I won't lie to you. I particularly loved it. I think it's great. Even if it sounds like I was harsh on it with some of my like feedback, it's only because I'm trying to be transparent with you guys. These are obvious things that I noticed that I feel that other tuners or people that are into doing that type of thing might be like, hey, like why? Like this is a major thing. Why didn't you tell us? Such as the whole automatic upshift, right? So let me know what you guys thought. If there's any questions that I didn't address in this video that you're like, oh, like, hey, I wonder if he looked into this, uh, just comment them down below. Again, I'm very responsive. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions, what you thought of it. If this is something on your radar that you're looking forward to maybe buying, um, or if it's something that might interest you, maybe those of you that have a first or second gen Veloster, would you consider getting rid of that particular car for this? for its practicality because it is a four-door sedan as opposed to a hot hatch just questions i think about let me know in the comments down below and like i said if i didn't uh, address something feel free to ask and i'll get back to you as soon as i can uh but as always guys this was kind of my first hands-on with this um i'm really hoping i could do something similar for the sonata m-line because that vehicle is just insanely awesome um uh, but 
thank you for all the love and support. Sorry that I rambled. Hopefully, uh, I, you know, touched base on things that were important to you. But please be safe out there. Keep doing you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. What's cooler than having a sea of Hyundais till the eye can see? Having the actual sea. See the ocean, guys? It's the Pacific Ocean. For those of you that don't know, I live in San Diego, California, so we get the beach right next door. It's beautiful.